Well, I know what. I hope these one point, two point losses start to swing in our favor real soon. Uh, we keep having quarters that we don't show up. I think in the second quarter we just we didn't play. I think we lost that. Well, I'm looking at it here. It's, it's 22 to 8. We disappear in a quarter. Uh, I don't know what that is. Trust me, I'm trying to correct it. Uh, it may be related to our, our youth. And maybe not, but I'm going to try and make an adjustment. Maybe I need to change the entire lineup going into a new quarter every time and see if that works. Um, their guard... Celica Sterling, 29 points, eight three-pointers. How was she able to get looks after she'd already made the first few, and so you know you were obviously aware of where she was, who she was? I was aware, but uh, the unfortunate part is I wasn't on the court. They seemed to lose her from time to time. Uh, lack of discipline. Uh, I think our focus tonight was we came close to Alabama. We came close to TCU. Uh, we can just show up. We back on our home court, and it's just gonna happen. I told our team that this is a very, very dangerous team. They shoot the ball high volume. They shoot a lot of threes, uh, and they're gonna play that way for 40 minutes. Uh, I think our defense is good enough to run them off the three-point line and, and, and put them into the teeth of our defense. But unfortunately, that defensive game plan didn't work, and our offensive game plan uh, they abandoned. And I, I thought we then when we actually went to it, we made a comeback. You got out to a fast start. You jumped out to an 8-0 lead. Do you think that also contributed to maybe your players taking the foot off the gas a little bit? Well, jumping out to an 8-0 lead, doing everything opposite of what the game plan was, was by me reminding them that that wasn't the game plan, it almost shut them down, you know. They, they jumped out and it was, it was just, it almost looked at, as if they were going to take this team for granted. They was going to go and do whatever they wanted to do. And it took us away from being the team that, that I was trying to establish us as in the first half. And once we tried to get that established, it looked like we lost our confidence and stopped being aggressive. Once we did that, Southeast Louisiana got aggressive and they gained confidence. And at that point, we, we lost our confidence. Uh, ended the first quarter, going to the second quarter. I'm trying to get that confidence back, and they look confused. And uh, tried to get them to regroup. At the same time, the ball was rolling on the other end. Our opponents were playing with confidence. They was hit threes. We started fouling. And in the first half, I think we had 12 turnovers. They had one. And they shoot high volume. You, you can't play a team and give them that many uh, extra attempts at the basket and expect to beat them. You mentioned the turnovers. There was a stretch there in the second quarter where I think four or five possessions in a row resulted in a turnover before your, your team got a shot up. How much of that was just being a little bit out of sync offensively and how much of it was specifically what the other team was doing defensively? It was, to me, I, I want to give them credit for that, but I can't. It was totally us. Uh, uncharacteristic of what we were working on, what we prepared to do, uh, and we went out there I thought it was a total underestimation of the team that was coming in here, and 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 hopefully we can grow from it. But I guess we're gonna we have to face a lot of firsts with this young team, so there's gonna be a lot of growing to do, and uh, it's painful. And everybody's saying we you know be patient, we'll learn how to win. But hell, I want to win right now. <laughs> you've always said since you've been here that games go in runs. Each team will go on a little bit of a run. At what point tonight, was there a point tonight when you, when the thought changed from you needed a run to take the lead to, okay, now this game's in danger of getting away from you? Uh, I felt it was in danger probably midway through the third quarter. Uh, but I thought we still had an opportunity to get back in it. Uh, coming out of halftime, we knew we were down eight. I said eight was nothing. I told you you would be down. I said this team was going to make runs. And if we didn't do what we was capable of doing with a, with a purpose, that we would get, get ourselves down. But the fortunate thing about that is they was going to give us a chance to get back in the game, and they did. But we still was missing the opportunities that, that was giving us a chance to make a run. And that's when I thought the game was getting out of hand. I thought we was gonna have a, wasn't going to have an opportunity to make a comeback 
if we didn't take advantage of some of our opportunities. So at that point, I had to absolutely change the tempo and start going to a full court 1-2-2 uh, two, two trap. Uh, and at that point, we got a couple turnovers that created some energy, and we found ourselves back in the game. In your game at TCU, Alicia Froling set the school record for double doubles. She got another one tonight with 14 <laughs> points and 18 rebounds. Did her performance look as good to you as it looked on the stat sheet? Uh, yes. The reason I say yes is because Alicia was going to be more of a decoy for us tonight. We knew they was going to double team her. Uh, we wanted to get her to kind of reverse pivot out of the double team and get everybody to relocate. But we weren't, we weren't doing that. First and foremost, we weren't getting the ball to Alicia when she was open in order to execute what we had planned to do. They did exactly what we thought they were going to do. Uh, the thing about Alicia, 14 and 18, it didn't look pretty. It didn't look good. It was hard fought. Uh, she was competing extremely hard. We got to get other people to do their jobs uh, to relieve that pressure. If we all do our job, Alicia won't have to work as hard. I'm trying not to play her as many minutes because she still hasn't found her, her perfect form or 100% form yet. Uh, but she's fighting like, oh, I mean, you can't expect or ask anything else of her. From where I sat, it looked like Mackenzie Ellis got hit across both arms on that last play with a second left or whatever it was. Did you get any kind of explanation as to... No, I didn't get an explanation. I, or did I, you I, even I, ask? Of course I did. I thought she got fouled, but I'm trying not to be that guy that always complains at the end of the game whether or not we can cause... Uh, I don't know if the referees may be thinking we, we're too young to win right now. Maybe we need to take our beatings. Uh, but we're fighting. Uh, we just got to now make those plays that keep us out of those situations where a last second call uh, would determine the win or loss of a game. You've talked after several games this year, and this will probably be a theme throughout the season about how young you are with mm -hmm. seven freshmen. How, as you're teaching them and helping them, as you said, learn how to win, yeah. how do you balance the frustration of three losses with the optimism of being that close, four points separating all three games? I don't do a good job of it, I promise you that. I, I would say uh, tonight they, they, they caught more of my competitive spirit in the fact that you can't walk out and not play with a sense of urgency. We're only asking for 40 minutes of your absolute best. I'm not asking for two hours. We prepare for two hours. We prepare sometimes two and a half hours. We ask it for 40 minutes. 40 minutes and we make a substitution so it's five, ten minutes first. We ask it for your absolute best. And they're young enough to give you all of that energy. And when they don't give the energy, um, that's the thing that I'm not satisfied or more displeased with. And um, there's no balance in that because I know a lot of people would love to be playing Division One basketball, love to have this opportunity, and they got a tremendous opportunity. And they don't understand how quickly four years will pass them by. I want them to max out every time they get to display what they can do for 40 minutes. I want their best.